Can you guess what we're gonna talk about today? Need a clue? Yeah, Christmas in July. <laughs> Act one opens in a very green scenario, a funeral. Not Scrooge's, but one of his best friends and co-workers, Jacob Marley. Marley has died precisely on Christmas Eve, but there's no one really there to mourn him. Only a clergyman, a clerk, the undertaker, and Scrooge himself. Now, Scrooge, not exactly very happy to be there, has to be there anyway because he will be the only person to respond for Marley, and Marley tells us this as he opens the play. He describes a Scrooge and his covetous, morose, and malcontent attitude towards anything in life. A Scrooge is pretty much the most unpleasant person to live, and Marley makes sure that we understand this as the first scene progresses. Scene 2 takes place exactly one year after Marley's death, on Christmas Eve. This time, however, we are in Scrooge's office, where he is working alongside his clerk, Bob Cratchit. His nephew goes into the office announcing a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, to which Scrooge replies with a humbug and very unpleasant words to follow. His nephew tries to convince him to go to his dinner party and accompany him with the rest of his family, to which Scrooge denies constantly, saying that marriage is nonsense, his life is nonsense, and celebrating Christmas is the biggest nonsense of all. Although his nephew tries and constantly reminds him that they are the only family that he has left, Scrooge completely refuses and is stacing his ground. I will not celebrate Christmas. His nephew leaves disappointed, but then two men go into the office. They are looking for charity, and Scrooge seems to be the perfect person to ask. However, Scrooge refuses their offer and says that he already donates to institutions that he actually supports, including prisons. The men are very, very surprised that Scrooge would refuse to donate to children or to poor people. Scrooge replies that they better die and decrease the surplus population, which surprises everyone at the office and pretty much disappoints them as well. Eventually, the men leave and Cratchit asks for a way to leave the office as well. Scrooge reluctantly agrees to give him the day off, but decides that it will be best to just get on with it and make sure that Cratchit goes the day after Christmas just on time. As you can see, Scrooge is not exactly the most pleasant person to work with. Scene 3 follows Scrooge from his office to his house. He pretty much displays a very, very bad attitude towards anyone in his path. As you know, everyone is celebrating Christmas, but Scrooge is resolute not to do it. He goes immediately home but starts to notice that there are weird presences surrounding him. He even sees an apparition on his door. He attributes it to an indigestion and moves over to the house. However, after a while, he hears a very, very resounding noise. And all of a sudden, Marley appears in his room, carrying a very heavy chain and looking very distressed. Scrooge becomes terrified of the apparition, and even though he still remains skeptical of what's going on, after a very powerful scream for Marley, he is now a believer. Scrooge asks, why, asks Marley, why is he there? What do you want from me? To which Marley replies, basically, you need to change. Otherwise, you're going to be just like me when you die. Scrooge is very scared and asks him how can he can turn his life around? How can he change? To which Marley says, there will be three ghosts that will visit him tonight. And those ghosts are going to show you the way that your life was, the way that your life is, and what your life is going to become. And if you do not have the power to change your situation, this is how you're going to end up. While Scrooge is still somewhat skeptical, he basically agrees to this proposition and waits for the ghosts. And trust me, things are not gonna get cute. Not at all. 
4 and scene 5 are scenes that we can analyze together as scene 4 is a relatively short one. In scene 4, we are introduced to the first ghost, the ghost of the Christmas past. This ghost tells Scrooge that he is going to take him through a journey of his childhood and his young adult life. The idea behind this is to show old Scrooge the type of person that he once was and the reasons of why he became the person that he is today. The first Christmas that the ghost of the Christmas past takes him to happens when Scrooge is around six or seven. He is alone in the snow, crying and feeling very lonely, and his old Scrooge refuses to watch this scene. We move on to another Christmas when Scrooge turns 12 and then there's a little girl that comes into a room where he's reading, about six or seven. This little girl is Scrooge's little sister, Fan, the mother of his nephew. Fan is very excited to tell Scrooge that he can go home for Christmas, that this is the perfect time because, and this is important, their father is in a great mood and he has agreed that Scrooge can come to his house to celebrate. Right from the get-go, we can see that Scrooge does not have a very easy childhood and the relationship with his father is a very difficult one. Scrooge feels very happy to see his sister again, but also sad at the same time in knowing that he has rejected his nephew all his life and that nephew is the last memory that his little sister left him. The Ghost of the Christmas Past takes him to another Christmas. This time, we can see a young Scrooge at one of his first jobs talking and having a good time with some of, the, of his co-workers. And then we see Scrooge's first boss, Fezziwig. Scrooge admires Fezziwig very dearly because the jolliness and the happiness of his character. Scrooge vows to become a great boss, just as great as Fezziwig. Old Scrooge then becomes guilty because he realizes that he is not that great boss. He's been awful to Cratchit this entire time so he bows to become better. But then the ghost of the Christmas past takes him to another scene. This is the last scene. And this is the scene where we see a man and a woman having a discussion. In summary, the discussion goes like this. This woman is telling this man that she is canceling their engagement. This man asks repeatedly what was the reason and she complains the fact that this man only cares about money and that he has put money over her feelings. This man says that money is the most important thing and that without money, he would not be able to start a family and to become someone important in life. Old Scrooge then realizes that this man is himself and this woman used to be his fiance, the love of his life. Old Scrooge realizes that he has lost a woman who loved him over money and becomes very, very upset about this fact. As you can see, Act 1 is just a little introduction into Scrooge and his character features. Basically how he is, why he is the way he is, and why he behaves the way in which he does. In Act 2, we're going to learn a little bit more about the ghost of the Christmas present, the ghost of the Christmas future, and what exactly is Scrooge going to do. Is he going to still be the same person or does he want to change and become a better one? Well, we'll see in Act 2. Thank you so much for watching guys. Always remember to subscribe in case you like content like this. Stay tuned for Act 2 because that one is coming very very soon. And remember, if you have any suggestions and stories that we could analyze just a little bit together, then don't forget to leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye guys, and Merry Christmas, even if it's July.